Hello and welcome to this Ferros Designer screencast with me, Simon Hicks. I'm going to show you a couple of cool lighting effects using pixel matrices and transparency in Ferros Designer. Let's get started by adding some fixtures to the plan. Any old uh, RGB LED fixture will do for this example. Right click duplicate to create a grid. 24 by 18 should give us a good size to work with. Make sure all the fixtures are selected and click the new pixel matrix button. Call this matrix all fixtures. There we go. In case you haven't programmed a, uh, a matrix effect before, let's just uh, let's just do one now as an example. Go to the program view and uh, browse to the matrix preset library. And drag on the 2D color on color matrix effect to the timeline. Let's change the type to radial. Knock the pulse width down to 50% and change the period to two seconds. Make it a little bit slower. Set it to hold at end so we can uh, watch it and keep watching it some more. And then to preview it, go to View, Tear Off Simulate, or you can use a shortcut, Control F8. It brings up the simulate window, and there's our simple matrix effect. Now, back to the new stuff. I'm going to offset this radial effect so that it appears to be coming from the top left corner of the grid. To do that, go back to the, uh, go to the media tab and just copy the matrix, select it, and hit copy. Exactly the same, but now we can play around with it. So we'll call this all top left, given what we're about to do. Now we want to increase the size of the matrix, so we'll uh, increase the width to twice, to 48, and the same with the height, so twice that to 36. Zoom out with the mouse wheel to see the whole thing, and then you can click and drag your fixtures down to the bottom right hand corner of the matrix. So now the matrix effect will be played on this whole screen, the light area, but we're only going to see the bottom right hand corner, which means the center will be in the top left corner of the fixtures. Let's program an effect onto that now. Go back to program and we're going to copy the timeline we created before. And now we just need to move our programming down onto the new matrix row. No quick way to do this I'm afraid, so it's right click copy right click paste onto the new row and then right click delete to remove the old effect. Control F8 brings up the simulate window. Starting that, there's the effect coming from the top left corner of the matrix. Finally, let's mix in some transparency. So, go back to your first timeline using the handy shortcut Control Shift Tab to go back to the previous timeline. Select the, uh, the preset and let's change the color of the rays, which is the top color of the 2D color on color preset. Let's have red for that. Now let's go back to the second timeline using the shortcut Control Tab. So just to recap there, that's Control Tab to go to the next timeline and Control Shift Tab to go back to the previous timeline. Very handy shortcut. So in this timeline, we want to make the base of this effect transparent. This means that instead of the base colour, whatever timelines are playing underneath this timeline will show through. Now we just have to start these two timelines in the right order. The timeline with the opaque effect first, followed by the timeline with the partially transparent effect. So, go to the trigger view, add a startup effect, a startup trigger, sorry, and create a new action, a start timeline action, that starts the first timeline, that's the opaque one. Then create another new action, start timeline, and this time pick number two, which is the one with the transparency in. To preview this, go to simulate, switch to project view and hit start, which fires the start of the trigger. And there we go, the effect playing on top of the other. Though it doesn't look like much. But uh, think what you could do with sparkles, linear 2D colour on colour effects, all with different colours and matrix offsets. Thanks for watching.